Hello, what's up guys? Welcome back to Zodiac Trader. So today we're going to look at a really interesting topic. We're going to look at what our so-called ATI. And this paper is published by the very famous, uh, I would say, uh, economist from NYU. And he was the one who predict, predicted 2008 subprime mortgage crisis. And perhaps a lot of readers and um, and economists, you know, fans and traders know about this guy. His name is Robini, and he is actually very good at macro, from my opinion. He has this, I, I think, a good mindset. He's not, you know, like that kind of nerdy type of guy, nor is he kind of a corrupted a government official. And he was appointed as a, a, a key position in the Treasury. And now he's publishing this very important paper to show actually how um, the Biden economics is actually using uh, this treasury, activist treasury insurance tool to manipulate the long-term bond yield to actually uh, stimulate the economy. So it is essentially a stealthy type of QE. It is a QE a, a stealthy QE um, and no one actually noticed about it. And I think this paper is really important because it actually um, explains like um, because I've been observing the Federal Reserve and also the US economy activities for a long time. I made a lot of videos explaining my thoughts and views on uh, the US economy. And for me, it seems like something just don't add up, right? We are seeing um, the interest rate gone uh, record high, and you're seeing like the Fed rate is trading between, you know, 5.25% to 5.5%. But um, it, I mean, the economy is supposed to hit a recession, all right? We're saying if, if you look at, uh, we used to have different economic cycle and I think it's quite normal for the economy to you know to hit that recession but it, it's not like necessarily a bad thing if the economy is like hitting the recession because uh, in some cases if if you be a able to deleveraging um, that kind of process you you take that bubble away from the economic system you you are kind of like essentially restarting uh, an economic cycle, which is a healthy thing, you know, because uh, for an individual, healthy individual, uh, sometimes it is not bad for you to get a little bit of flu or cold because sometimes your body will be stronger. You will have a better health condition when you have these kind of small problem. So I don't think a recession is necessarily a bad thing. It's a good way to ease out this bubble. But apparently, the U.S. economy hasn't gone through the recession, and the the period seems to be lengthened because of the certain tricks that the Federal Reserve and also the Treasury were playing. And essentially speaking, that you sort of start seeing that you know if you go to any bank, uh, you're seeing like CD rate gone up, but then when you ask about uh, the commercial rate, uh, especially a lot of uh, retail rate. Um, a lot of banks still have a very considerably low uh, percentage of consumer rate, uh, consumer, I would say consumer interest rate. And something you pay like, for example, credit cards, or maybe you take a loan for a business, you pay considerably low interest rate for that. Uh, for that, I was kind of confused because you're clearly seeing a divergence there because um, it's supposed to, people are supposed to, like, uh, you know, go through this impact of high inflation and high interest rate. People are supposed to, like, have a much higher delinquency rate. But it seems like the entire process had been slower. And the, I, I think for that, the only uh, rational explanation is that the Fed is is you know like 
the Fed is actually easing, using the Treasury yield as a way of uh, of launching QE, a sneaky type of QE. So in a sense, um, even though the Fed rate is trading at 5.425 to 5.5%, still you have some offset from, from that hidden QE. So the interest rate is actually like around 3 to 4%. It's not as high as what the Fed has claimed, and it is not as restrictive as the Fed has proclaimed. And the very purpose of launching this sneaky QE is to ensure the economy, like economy, runs quote unquote well, uh, to end support from uh, the demo voters, so they can, you know, the Democrats can, you know, continue uh, with, you know, basically continue their next presidency. So let's look at this article: the activist treasury insurance and the talk of war over monetary policy. It is a long, quite a long uh, article, and so I'm not going to go through like everything of this paper, but I think definitely uh, this is a paper worth reading. I'll actually make several videos about this, also the Bretton Woods, to explain deeper of all these thoughts and how uh, these concepts will impact the economy. So let's look at the author. So Stephen Niran, he's the senior strategist of Hassan Bay Capital, and also the Norio uh, Robini, he's a senior advisor and also the um, professor of NYU. And he is, you often see him from Bloomberg, and I think he's actually quite knowledgeable. Uh, and some people call him like Dr. Doomsday. Um, he's a bit contrarian, like he talks, you know, a, a lot of statements of he's actually seem to be uh, more kind of unpopular because he's not that kind of long and whole guy. So I think what he, uh, what he actually proposed is definitely worth reading. So I've highlighted some of the very interesting thoughts from these papers. So first part, like ATI serves as a stealth form of QE delivered by Treasury. QE functions by hiding bonds and interest rate risk away on the Fed's balance sheet. An ATI function by limiting the creation of bonds and interest rate risk at the source instead of skewing Treasury insurance towards short-term bills. So basically what QE really is, is that um, the Federal Reserve is going to suppress the long-term yield. And by suppressing long-term yield, meaning that they could control the supply and demand of the, the bond market, they will use uh, the auction and also the Treasury system to control the supply and demand of the market. They could sell the bonds. They could sell lots of bonds and then to artificially, uh, uh, you know, increase the bond yield or they could start purchasing huge amounts of bond and therefore the interest, the, the, the yield of the bonds, the long-term bonds will go down there afterwards. So ba basically, essentially what QE is that through purchasing a huge amount of assets, and also bonds. Uh, the Federal Reserve uh, artificially lower the, the long-term bond yield. So basically makes bond less attractive. So that's why people uh, will buy more credits instead of holding bonds. So that's a way of creating an easing environment. And in the same time, also it's a way of uh, increasing the monetary supply and that's how, that's why we always say QE essentially is like printing money. It's like flooding uh, the market with cheap credits, uh, debts, and also bills, right? So there are merely different forms of money. And they are in the same way, they are not like all money, but they do have functionality of money. And later I will explain that in one of the um, uh, one of the other paper uh, actually uh, there will be four pillar of money value I think in you know couple, in the next video I will explain precisely what that means okay it, it's going to be a little bit complicated because money does have different form it has different value so it is really important to know 
the difference between bill, debt, and real supply of money. Okay, so here, another high line, a 50 BP increase in the 10 year yield will have similar economic effect as a two point high in a Fed fund rate. The timing issue is complicated by the impending reinstatement of the debt limit on January 2 of 2025. So basically what ATI is, it's a monetary tool and also a policy and to use treasury insurance as a like open uh, open tool to control the supply and demand of um, like long-term uh, treasury and short-term bills okay and through that uh, supply and uh, through that manipulation is going to impact the long-term yield and through impacting long-term yield you basically you are actually easing the monetary environment without lowering interest rate, right? Because you are telling uh, everyone on this planet that you are not going to lower interest rate and you are going to keep the rate at 2.25 to 5.5%. But um, you're clearly seeing some of the high interest rate risk. So how do you take that interest rate risk away? Then you use ATI, you use uh, purchasing of long-term government debt in, in, a, in a sense that it, it is going to impact the long-term bond yield. Therefore, you have a much lower uh, long-term bond yield and you have more people uh, paying buying credits. That means people are purchasing uh, equities, people are buying risk assets. So in a sense, it's like the you you that that's basically what we're seeing recently. We're seeing the great magnificent seven. We're seeing cheap money flowing around, uh, in 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 the system. We're seeing, despite of the worsening fundamentals that we talked about previously, uh, in the previous video, we talked about that because the beige book actually shows the economy has been slower. But then you're seeing like the S and P hitting a new historic high which is quite abnormal and the reason why uh, that something like that is happening is because of the ATI program okay so here uh, they do a little bit review of quantitative easing so basically they mentioned about these LS APS the so-called large-scale asset purchase okay so LSAP rely on purchasing long-term government debt to move the economy in ways purchasing long, shorter term government debt will not. The reason for this distinction is that bills are money like in that they are short term instruments with almost no interest rate or credit risk. As treated in Greenwood and Vallanos, blah, blah, blah. Okay. So the money likeliness of bills makes them close substitute with the money or bank reserves. So basically, different form of money, as I have previously. Uh, previously been explained so there are different form of money so swapping short-term bill for money in savers portfolio lead to only modest difference in uh, in economic constraints so after the global financial crisis and tangent lsap the fed began remunerating reserves and the yield on reserves and treasury bills become similar so what really happens is that uh, they are kind of mixing you know, they're like mixing different form of money in the money circulation system that it, it used to only have bank reserves. And before 2008 and the Bretton Woods system, when the Bretton Woods system was first constructed, it's only gold, only gold and the, 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 the precise amount of the, the bank reserve that, you know, fits, you know, precisely the level of the gold reserve. But now money has basically changed different form because now the Federal Reserve allowing different form of money, different forms of money to circulate in the monetary system. So here they say, bills are not part of base money, but they are crazy money. So you have a lot of these crazy money flowing inside the system, uh, diluting the purchase power of the US dollar, actually making the so-called cheap money, right? This is not like the real form of money. If you think about uh, what happened historically, you think about the great American dream. People, you know, have people have like you know ten thousand dollar worth of house. People, 
uh, people actually pay for a couple of cents for a cheeseburger. That kind of time, your your U.S. dollar actually was a lot of money because the purchase power were, were, was were very strong. Okay, so essentially the U.S. dollar used to be really valuable, but now because of uh, what happened in the two zero eight financial crisis, there are different form of money being introduced in the system. Therefore, the the the, the currency that you're currently holding lose its value. Okay. And here we see Fed bids up long-term treasury yield leads holder of treasury notes and bonds to sell them and buy something which here is instead, right? So um, they're basically in toying and gaming that, you know, like long-term treasury yield, uh, for example, like corporate debt, and the price of credit in turns move higher. The holder of credit... <coughs> sells and buy something riskier like stocks this is basically what i have explained previously that you are selling the bonds and you are actually um you know you can buy, buy a lot of bonds and then you can you know push down that treasure yield you you put down like the, the attractiveness of the bond therefore people will buy credits people pursue uh, equities so Financial condition is increasing more economic activity through well effect cheaper access to funds, increase of funds. This is basically why a lot of people say, hey, um, you know, like uh, you have a lot of people saying that my 401k has increased, the stock price has increased, that I think that would be a strong economy. That, that's pure BS because uh, you have a lot of cheap money circulating in the system. Uh, if you have like max seven in your portfolio, does that make you buy two burgers? Does that make you buy two clothes? I don't think so because uh, you're probably going to hold that stock for longer, right? You don't want to uh, sell these assets. What you want to do is you want to keep holding these assets until you make more money. But then because of high interest rate and high inflation, you end up having less cash flow from your job because of consistent layoff and stuff. You are having a worse job market. You will have end up having less cash. So at some point, you are going to sell your assets. You have to because you are running out of cash. So when by the time when everyone started to sell their assets, for example, like their Max Seven uh, stocks for the cash flow. You know that will become a huge sell off. That will would say we will say that would definitely be a topping of the S and P market. So the Fed removes interest rate risk from investor portfolio by buying long uh, duration bearing treasury securities. Those investors have additional capacity to take different different form of risk. So ATI is a stealthy QE. So basically, Treasury expects to borrow $847 billion of new money from the Republic in the third quarter. Treasury has indicated it will issue $1,100 billion of gross coupons and approximately $650 billion of redemptions. This implies net new coupon insurance will be $450 billion. So the gap to $847 billion must be made up by new bill in turn implying approximate net new bill insurance of 397 billion or 47 percent of money raised normally treasury would borrow 15 percent to 20 percent of bills and the rest in coupons the deviation from the 15 percent to 20 percent ranges ati if treasury borrowed 18 percent of its funding bills instead of 47 percent it would require uh, insurance of 245 billion additional coupons so uh, the okay so here where is here it works by removing interest rate risk from the market and hiding away from the fed's balance sheet ati works by limiting the production of interest rate risk at the source okay in a sense 245 billion of missing coupons is a form of self qe over the quarter that provides many of the same liquidity consequence as the fed driven qe so how convenient right if you're running out of money you just toy that treasury yield you use that mechanism of the you know auction process you use this short-term bill long-term bill to create an artificially uh you know easing environment while you are actually doing a lot of strict restrictive uh, monetary policy how convenient so 
this is what I'm going to say in this video. So I will make uh, several other videos to explain this paper because this is definitely a masterwork. And I thank you guys for watching this video. If you feel like you want to communicate or if you feel like you want to uh, leave a comment, please leave comments below. And I will see you in the next uh, video. Bye.